I speak to you in the name of one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. When I was in kindergarten, I was in the bathroom, unsupervised, alone, and I opened the medicine cabinet and found a pair of scissors. And I cut off all of my hair, not just bangs, all of my hair from here forward. Just cut it off. Wandered out to go show my mom my handiwork. And she said, you have a dance recital tomorrow. So there are photos from my first and last dance recital <laughs> with a, uh, I remember I had two costumes. Um, one was for the song, Baby Face, you yeah, just that cute, you know that one? Uh, and so it had this like, f like a baby bonnet that kind of wrapped around and fit perfectly with where I had no hair. And the other was to a song called, I'm going to sit right down and write myself a letter. Ding! And um, the bow had to go more towards the back of my head than where everybody else's was. And I have to tell you that while I had a spirit that could not be rivaled, I was awful. I was very mathematical in my precision. I knew the moves but there was zero connection, zero grace from move to move. So it was almost, it's ironic, I'm in the army now, but it's almost militaristic in my dancing. And what sealed the deal that I was not welcome back was when the girl next to me made a mistake and I pushed her. <laughs> I'm not a great dancer, but I do love it. And I particularly love to dance with the people that I love. And I married a man here who is quite a dancer. He was on the dance team in high school. He joined someone else's college dance team, not even his own school. He even won a contest and danced on stage at the Hollywood Bowl with the Black Eyed Peas. Now, he was the only adult in the dance contest, but he won, and he danced on stage. He is a good dancer, and if you were at our wedding, you would see the differences in how we dance. This man just gets lost. It is pure and wonderful joy, and I love to dance with him. And I love to dance with our daughter, who now, anytime you hear any music, those legs start going and she dances. And I love to dance with my friends. And I love to dance with my dad, who only knows how to polka, really. But we do it. I love to dance. But the greatest dance that I'm a part of is my relationships. I love to dance with Sean because it's him. Because we're in a relationship, and it's a joy to connect in that way. Every relationship we have is a little bit of a dance. There's a connection, there's a movement. Someone leads and someone follows. Usually I'm trying to lead even though I don't know what I'm doing. Sometimes you go fast. Sometimes it's a little slow. Sometimes it's choreographed and everyone's in sync. And sometimes it is free form, put the music on and let people go. Sometimes it's joyful, and sometimes it's filled with sorrow and lament. But the greatest example of this relationship dance is the heart of God, is the nature of God. It is the dance of the Trinity. Now this is Trinity Sunday, as Lisa mentioned. And it's a weird day to have a feast for God. Isn't every Sunday a feast of God? Yes, 
But today we're focused on who God is and how we know about the nature and the heart of God. This relational God that is three persons in one God. This flow of dance, this flow of relationship is ultimately love. Our relational and interconnected God is love. God, our Father, God, our Mother, God, our Creator, those are all names that we have to use to describe something that is indescribable. And they all kind of fall short. But we use them anyway, because it's what we have. So this Creator, this mother, this father, this part of the Trinity initiates the dance, initiates that spirit in us that starts to think, well, maybe I'm going to start moving. I have a desire to dance. And then you have God the Son, God the Christ, Jesus, who expresses that dance and gives form to that dance and is in fact the hand that reaches out and says, will you dance? And then you have God the Spirit, which is the music that swirls and fills and kind of connects everything. And we know that all of these entities, all of these persons of the Trinity, have always been. Always been. We had this beautiful reading from Proverbs in which wisdom, this female expression of the Spirit, says, when he, when, when God, when God the Creator marked out the foundations of the earth, I was beside him, like a master worker. I was daily in his delight, rejoicing before him always, rejoicing in this inhabited world, and delighting in the human race. Delighting. This dance of love is timeless. It is infinite. And we are always welcome to join this dance. Our God of love, our God of relationship, always has room for one more. God's dance card is always open and never full. Just like this table always has room for one more, and one more, and one more. Look at your bulletins this morning. Look over at the very front cover. Please, do it, do it now. Normally, I don't encourage you to look away during a sermon, but please, today, do so. On the cover of our bulletin today, we have an icon by Kelly Lattimore, a modern-day iconographer, and it's called Trinity. And it's a play on the Rublev icon that we all know and see, that beautiful Russian piece of, of prayer, of art. But here we have the three persons of the Trinity. And my friends, they are welcoming you to their table. They're welcoming you into their dance. Their table is much like our table and has an expression of welcome for everyone. And their hands are joined, but there's also two hands outstretched, waiting for you, waiting for me. Will you take their hands today? It's up to you. Will you join this dance? Now this dance 
is not limited to our bodies. It is not limited to our bodies and how they can or cannot move, how the world thinks our bodies should move, how we think our bodies should move. This dance is beyond our hearing, our ability to hear, our ability to understand music. It is beyond our abilities at all. This is simply love that welcomes the beloved. The beloved children of God are welcome in this dance. Now this is a dance that we join every Sunday. And hopefully we take this love and this joy and this movement with us out into the world. I had the pleasure of interviewing my granny uh, a year or two before she died for a family systems course that I was taking. And I got to interview her and I actually asked her if she had any regrets in this life. And she had two, one of which was, I wish I danced more. Now, my granny loved to go dancing, and she grew up in a small farm town in Minnesota, and there was a dance hall, and it's what you went and did. You danced with the person who brought you, you danced with everybody else there, you danced because dancing was joyful, and fun. And she told me, you never turn down an invitation to dance when someone you love asks you. She also told me never to turn down a trip to Vegas, so I take her advice with a little grain of salt. But never turn down the dance when someone you love has invited you to dance. Don't turn down this invitation this morning. The Holy Trinity, the Holy God of love, of dance, of joy, is extending that hand to you today. And I hope that you will share in that flow, in that movement, in that love, in that relationship that is at the very heart and the very core of who God is, and that you will extend that to all those that you love. Amen.